Welcome to the Battle of the Ball and Socket, a synovial showdown between our hip and our shoulder. Two similar joint, but only one can reign supreme if we bring them head to head. First, let's check the tail of the tape. These joints have a lot of features in common. For example, we can perform the same six movements at both, and a synovial joint, each is enclosed by a joint capsule and reinforced with ligaments. But when we look closer, we start noticing some important differences. For starters, not all ball and socket joints are created equal. The acetabulum of the femur is a deep bony socket, made even deeper by the labrum of cartilage around its edge. That means the head of the femur can fit snugly inside, a bit like placing a football into a bowl. The glenoid fossa of the shoulder, however, is just a shallow depression that's significantly smaller and less rounded than the head of the humerus. Putting these bones together is more like placing that football on a saucer. We can describe these differences by talking about how congruent the bones are. Congruence just means how well those two structures fit together. So, for example, Lego is very congruent, whereas supermarket own brand stackable building blocks are not so congruent. The congruence of a joint affects how stable it is. So, the hip being highly congruent is a very stable joint whereas the shoulder is less so. We can also see differences in the structures around the joint. The joint capsule of the hip is taut and tight, whereas the shoulder has a very lax capsule, particularly on the inferior aspect. Similarly, the ligaments of the hip are strong, tightly wound, and play a vital role in limiting movement of the joint. The ligaments of the shoulder are so inconsequential that I had to look in three books just to find out what they're called. So, why do we have these differences between the joints? Well, it's all to do with the roles that they're adapted for. The hip supports the weight of the body on the lower limb, keeping us upright during walking, running or jumping. Consequently, this joint is adapted for stability, with a deep congruent socket and strong ligaments. The shoulder connects our upper limb to the trunk. Generally, this isn't supporting the weight of our body, but is instead being used to manipulate and interact with the world around us. To allow this, the shoulder sacrifices stability in favour of mobility. This means that although both joints can perform the same six movements, the shoulder have a much larger range of movement. For example, most people can abduct their upper limbs above their head, but would struggle to do the same thing with their lower limbs. On the other hand, these adaptations make the shoulder much more susceptible to subluxations and dislocations. In the hip, the femoral head is nestled nice and securely inside the acetabulum and normally needs a powerful force, such as a car accident, to dislodge it. So, who should be the articular victor? Which joint is the best ball and socket? Well, it depends on what you want to do with them. If you need a joint that's stronger and more stable than Theresa May's government, it has to be the hip. But if it's a highly mobile joint you're after, then it's the shoulder every time. 